There's a debate about just how important the slashing of this 45% top tax rate is. It's not so much about that. It wasn't going to raise that much money. It's more about the perception of this whole plan. Can you take us through what your feeling is about whether or not this is a viable economic and fiscal plan for the U.K.? No, Dom, it's not. I mean, I, I think the, the government deserves credit for backtracking at least uh, partially on the plan that they put forward. But uh, the plan uh, as it currently stands, and of course it could change again, uh, is bad policy. Uh, you know, it's a pure fiscal stimulus, deficit, deficit finance tax cuts and government spending increases at a time when the economy is operating, the UK economy is operating well beyond full employment and the, and the inflationary pressures here are very severe, even more severe than in the U.S., and on top of that, uh, they've got a pretty serious uh, fiscal problem, and this just adds to that, and there's some questions about fiscal sustainability. But, Dom, I think the thing that is most disconcerting and disturbing is just uh, the lack of credibility of the government and, uh, you know, how that may affect the, the credibility of the Bank of England. The Bank of England's in a really tough spot now because uh, they're, they're going to need to raise interest rates to offset the stimulatory effects of, these, of this, uh, this package. And that's going to be tough to do uh, under the scrutiny of the government. So, uh, you know, the credibility here of the of the folks that are running the show is uh, really low. And obviously, that's a, a big problem for the U.K. And because the U.K. is such an important part of the global financial system, it's a problem for everybody. You know, what's crazy about that is you're probably, I don't know, the, the, the third dozenth person I've spoken to in the last just maybe week with regard oh, right? to uh, about the U.K. And they use the word credibility or credible or some derivation thereof. And we asked our, 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 our CNBC international correspondent in London earlier about this. This is a government that's about a month old. How important is it to kind of establish or, or perhaps reestablish, whatever your view is, this notion that they have a good plan for the economy going forward? And, and, and is this the way to go about doing it? They've got a massive Conservative Party conference going on right now in Birmingham in the U.K., yeah, it's going to be tough. I, I don't know how they're going to uh, figure uh, fi fix this. Uh, I mean, the, today's move uh, to unwind the tax cut uh, for high-income households is a, it's a good step, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. I think it's really up now really up to the Bank of England. The BOE has got to step up and continue to just manage monetary policy in, in a way that's appropriate for the U.K. economy. And I think given this fiscal package, that means much higher interest rates. So they're going to have to follow through on that uh, and and start to pivot away from this quantitative easing that they engage that are now engaged in try to stabilize the system. Hopefully they do, then they can start uh, quantitative tightening and uh, because they're going to have to because if they don't, uh, inflation is going to become more entrenched here and you know stagflation becomes more of a potential scenario for them. So I don't know that this government can figure it out at this point, uh, but uh, hopefully the Bank of England England can salvage things. So it, you know it has credibility and. And hopefully it'll, it'll establish that going forward here. You know, Mark, earlier in, in the program, we did a segment talking about the strength of the U.S. dollar. And, and the, it's almost a regime at this point. It's such a big uptrend for the U.S. dollar. I guess maybe you could argue that on a relative basis, which financial markets are all about, the U.S., the Fed, even the Treasury Department are probably in a better position versus many peers so is this dollar strength going to continue, and will it eventually at some point be a real drag on the U.S. economy and its markets? Yeah, it's going to remain strong for a while. I mean, as long as the Fed's, uh, you know, engaged in raising interest rates, and it's unclear where they're going to stop and when they're going to stop and how long uh, the uh, high rates are going to prevail, I think the dollar remains strong. Uh, so that means well into next year. And when, when, when I say strong, it's really strong. I mean, if you look at it on a real broad trade-weighted basis, not just against the pound, but every currency, Chinese, Euro, Yen, whatever it is, it's as strong as it's, it's been since uh, the early 1980s. And uh, that's the only, other, the only other time it's been stronger than it is today since uh, the world adopted flexible exchange rates back in the early 1970s. So it's very strong. Now, we won't stay here forever. Uh, you know, once we get on the other side of these rate hikes and inflation starts to moderate, and it will, it'll come back in. The economy normalizes, you know, the dollar will come back in. But, you know, bet that's, that between now and then is quite some time. And it, as you point out, it will begin to slow growth. I will say, uh, to some degree, that's by design, right? I mean, the Fed needs, uh, wants uh, the economy to slow, uh, get job growth down to something that's more consistent with the uh, growth in the labor force, get unemployment moving a little bit higher. 
And one way to do that is, uh, you know, with a strong dollar and uh, and, a, and a broader trade, a bigger trade deficit. So by by some to some degree, that is uh, uh, by design here.